Hi, this is Noah Newman, and welcome to the third installment of our Citrus Cultivation Workshop Series, uh, presented with support from Kaufman Organic Farms, Hawaii Farmers Union Waianae, Hawaii Tropical Fruit Growers, and Logoya Farms. Here's a little info about Kahumana Farm Hub. Um, it's established on the west side of Oahu. If you're a grower out there, you should probably be uh, working with them to uh, sell some of your products. And here's a little more info on our workshops. Like I said, this is the third of four. Um, they're also doing workshops on mango and breadfruit, trying to support their growers um, through increased agroforestry training, education, and specialization. So this workshop, we're going to be talking about pests and diseases. For those of you who don't know me, here are some photos of me. My farm is Lokoea Farms in Haleiwa. We grow citrus and tropical fruit on about eight acres. Here is an overview of my farm. You can see the different fields highlighted. Okay, let's jump right in. Let's talk about integrated pest management for citrus. Integrated pest management, uh, you might also see it as IPM, is sort of the idea of looking at pest control at as, as, a, um, as a bigger thing than just how to kill bugs. You want to look at your farm as a whole and think about what you can do to make, um, make life uncomfortable for bugs <laughs> on your farm rather than uh, just looking for which pesticide is going to be killing them. Your first line of defense should always be make sure you have healthy trees because healthy trees have healthy immune systems. So that means making sure that your trees are properly, properly fertilized, properly irrigated, and properly pruned. If your trees are happy, and if they have everything they need, you'll find that you really don't have as much of a problem with pests. That's sort of the whole underlying idea of, of organic um, cultivation, is you make sure that everything is in balance and and all your plants are happy and they're able to fight off the pests on their own and everything kind of keeps each other in check. If you have major pest problems, you might want to look at your whole system because usually that means that you have some kind of underlying need in tree management, like you're not fertilizing properly or your trees are really thirsty or you don't take care of your weeds or things like that. When you're talking about pest control, prevention is easier than elimination. The best fertilizer is the farmer's footsteps. That means you always want to be out there in your fields observing. Try to walk through your fields as often as possible. Try to ID the different pests and bugs that you see. Remember, not every bug is a pest. Some of the bugs are, are predatory. Um, they're beneficial bugs that they may kill um, bugs that you don't want on your plants, or they may be pollinators, or there's lots of other beneficials. Um, if you get to know the bugs that are around your trees all the time, then you, you can kind of tell when things are a little bit out of whack, when, when you have too many of the bad bugs and not enough of the good bugs. If you're just going to go out there and spray when you see any bug, you're, you might use a broad spectrum pesticide, so a pesticide that's not focused that will kill pretty much anything it touches, the most dangerous pesticides. That will kill all the bugs, including the, bug, the good bugs that usually help you out, and then you'll be in a worse place than when you started. If you're out there and looking at your trees every day, you're going to catch problems early, and then you can act on them in the most appropriate way before they get out of control. Look for annual patterns. I always recommend that farmers have some system of observation and record keeping. I use an app called um, Farm OS, and, but there's you know all kinds of different things out there. You can even just use a Word document, but write down the date and your observation when you're out there looking at things. And so you can look back on previous years and see what the patterns are. Remember, not every pest warrants a battle. A lot of times if I see some even some bugs that are nasty bugs on my big healthy trees, I kind of just let it go because 
it's not worth my time to, to fight that battle. I'm going to let the tree be healthy and have its own immune system and deal with it on its own. However, if it was a, a tiny baby tree that I just planted, that might be a battle that I'm willing to fight because that tree might need a little more help. Uh, manage your weeds. Bugs love to hide in weeds. And make sure you have good field sanitation. That means if fruit are falling off your trees, you're removing them and putting them in the compost pile, not just sort of letting them sit there and rot. And in the end, if you choose to use pesticides, make sure that you're using appropriate pesticides appropriately. You need to follow the rules. Um, it's the law to follow the rules on pesticides. And it, no one, uh, it's your responsibility to figure out what the law and the rules are. I highly recommend that you work with your extension agent if you're a commercial grower or work with the master gardeners uh, if you're a backyard grower. And I'll put the contacts for them later in this presentation. They can help you figure out which pesticides are appropriate or if any are appropriate. Okay, we're gonna talk about a few different kinds of insect pests. Because we can't go over everything in this presentation, we're gonna focus on what I consider the major pest of citrus in Hawaii. Mites is a huge pest thrips, and then scales, aphids, and mealybugs are also major pests. Now there's a whole bunch of pests that you'll see on your citrus here and there, but I consider them minor pests because they don't really have any economic uh, impact. They're not going to affect how much fruit I can grow and sell. So for example, the Asian citrus psyllid. If we lived in California or Florida or other places in the mainland where they grow citrus, this would definitely be a major pest because that's the pest that um, spreads the, the uh, citrus greening disease, uh, which is, there's no cure for it and it kills every citrus tree that gets it. So we're very lucky we do not have that disease here. However, we do have the bug, the vector. So it's probably only a matter of time. It's one of the reasons it's very important not to bring in citrus from the mainland. But this is a picture of, of the Asian, Asian citrus psyllids. Uh, leaf miners are another minor pest. We'll talk a little bit about those two guys later. But we have katydids, which are those funny looking um, uh, grasshopper kind of things. Whitefly can sometimes bother citrus. Rose beetle will be happy to eat citrus leaves occasionally. Um, some those big caterpillars, citrus swallowtail excuse me, caterpillars, um, citrus black fly, fruit fly, and sometimes I even get those little black tree cockroaches. All right, so let's talk about mites. These are my my arc enemy. I, I hate mites. They will discolor your fruit and make it really ugly. Now, I consider that partially a marketing uh, challenge, but we'll talk more about that in the next um, presentation. Let's focus mostly on the bugs here. So mites are really, really small. You cannot see them with the naked eye. If you have a magnifying glass or a microscope, you can see them, but they're, they're really small. You won't be able to just kind of look at them on your trees, but you will be able to see the damage that they cause. So, there's a few different kinds of mites, broad mites, rust mites, uh, bud mite, flat mite, but really don't worry about it. It doesn't really matter which one you have. You treat them pretty much all the same. If you see this type of uh, russeting on your fruit, on oranges, oftentimes it's brown. On lemons, it will be more um, silver a lot of times. That is caused by mites. And usually it's caused when the fruit is only about an inch Big. So it's when the fruit's really, really tiny, and then as the fruit grows, it stretches out and becomes that russeting that you see. So if you think about that, that's happening when the uh, bugs are feeding on the fruit, and the fruit is only about an inch small, that's when you need to do any type of spraying or, or management that you're going to do. You cannot wait till your fruit's already this size and looks like that because it's too late. A lot of times you'll only see it on one side of the rind. Um, Mites can also, besides fruit, they can damage new leaves. You can see in the picture, there's um, some kind of curling um, new leaves. And on older leaves, a lot of times you'll see a stippling, uh, yellowing on the leaves. And if it's really bad, they, all your leaves might even fall off. Overall, mites, I consider them to be a cosmetic problem because it's rare that they'll impact a tree so badly that they'll kill it. 
Um, although on younger trees, it's, it's definitely possible. Um, but mostly I think of it as how am I going to make my fruit prettier so that I can sell it easier. And in order to do that, I need to deal with mites. Here's some more pictures of mite damage. So we have a lemon up on the top with that silver discoloring. Some oranges a little bit below with the um, kind of brown russeting. We call that Holiva gold at my farm. Uh, some leaves that are curly because they were um, fed on when they were really small by mites. You can see sometimes uh, your branches, the, the parts where the growing part of the branch will become all kind of curly and gnarly uh, and the buds as well because the mites are grow you know eating them when they're growing and sort of causes them to grow in a funny way. And in the last picture, the two oranges vertically, the one on the bottom is the one with mite damage. So it, it can sometimes be um, sort of a stippling, a lightening of color on the oranges too. All right, and in the same category is, as mites, or I like to keep them in the same category because I treat them generally in the same way, uh, are thrips. And thrips, kind of like mites, are very small. Sometimes you can see them, sometimes you they're too small to see. They like to feed on tiny baby fruit under the sepals or underneath the part like um, that's around the bottom of the flower, that green part with the po pokey things on the top of the fruit. So you'll see that little fruit will have um, a discoloration there underneath the sepals and then as the fruit grows, like the orange in the picture here, the, it will stretch out and it will sort of move down the fruit. But if you see that ring sort of um, discoloration, that's usually thrips. A lot of times you'll see it also where the two fruit touch like if you have a, a cluster of fruit, like with grapefruit, that often happens, or lemons, where it's fruit, uh, trees that fruit really heavily. And the uh, thrips love to feed in that area where the two fruits are touching. A lot of times if you have really heavy crops, you are more likely to have a lot of thrips also. So something to consider when you're trying to decide if you should thin your crop out or not. They also like to live in the navel part of the orange, which is... I, I find in Hawaii that a lot of bugs like to live in the navel part of the orange. So on my farm, we just kind of shoot, shoot it out with the high pressure hose as a matter of, of our general post harvest. But they're, because thrips are so small, it's probably pretty easy to miss them. And then you cut open your orange and you might have like, it looks like there's a bug in there, even though they're really only living in the, the navel part, but kind of a pain. And again, like mites, not really the kind of thing that will kill the tree, but can make your fruit harder to sell. So the next um, category that I like to talk about are scales, aphids, and mealybugs. These are what I consider the ant transmitted sucking bugs. All of these guys will suck out the plant juices and they poop out what's what we call honeydew. It's, it's really just bug poop, um, but it's like a black sticky poop and ants love to eat that. So ants will farm these guys. They'll, they'll move them from tree to tree or from branch to branch, and they'll protect them from good bugs. So there may be some parasitic wasps that usually will come in and, and take care of these bugs for you so you don't have to worry about them. But if there's ants there, the ants are gonna fight off those parasitic wasps so that they can protect their, their scales so that they can eat their poop. It's kind of crazy if you think about it, but yeah, ants, they're, they're, they're the worst. Um, scales, aphids, and mealybugs are all easy to see, easy to identify, relatively easy to control. They love to feed on soft, succulent new leaf growth. So new trees um, that are maybe putting, putting out their first or second flush, they're the favorites of these bugs. They may need a little bit more help. If you have mature trees that are healthy, I, I rarely worry about having some scales, aphids, or mealybugs. There's probably, it would be hard to find a tree in my orchard that doesn't have these, at least a few of them here and there. But again, if you want to think about integrated pest management and everything in balance. It's okay to have a few of them because I know that I have beneficial insects coming in and feeding on them or laying their eggs in them. Um... What they do is they'll kind of discolor um, anything that they feed on, the leaves, the stems, the, um, the fruit. 
um, it, it can weaken the tree and it can cause fruit drop. Eventually it can even cause defoliation as well. Um, if you have a really bad infestation, it can cause the death of a tree. It's very rare. But actually, just just this week, there was one tree in my orchard that I wasn't. It was on the on the back side of a mulch pile, and I wasn't checking on it. And just the other day, I noticed that it had a really heavy mealybug infestation, and it was really struggling. And it wasn't a tiny tree. I mean, it was maybe three years old. But it's rare that that happens. Usually, if the tree is is older and it's it's um it has a good immune system, it can fight them off pretty well. The other thing that you don't like about these guys is that they can transmit and cause diseases and funguses. Um, sooty mold is a really common one that you'll see uh, when you have a lot of honeydew. Um, and aphids, aphids are definitely a vector of different diseases. So let's look at some pictures of what these guys do. Scales. So you can see the scales in this, in all three of these pictures. There are little circular things that you can sort of scrape off with your finger. Some of them are soft. Some of them are, are um, they have like a harder shell. It doesn't really matter what kind they are. You treat them all the same way. Um, some like to go on the stem, some on the fruit, some on the leaves. The ones on the fruit are my least favorite because again, commercially, you don't want to have all these little dots on your fruit. But the nice thing is that you can spray them off with the hose. Um, actually, all of the scales on your plant you can spray off with a high-pressure water hose. So like a, just a regular wa water gun. Uh, and if you do that regularly, that's one way to take care of that problem. Here's more pictures of scales. Look at the um, along the inside of the leaf where the veins are underneath the leaf and on top of the leaf, that's usually where you'll see the scales. So don't forget, you've always got to check underneath the leaves too. But their poop, the honeydew, it falls down, gravity obviously, and so that usually will be on the top part of the leaf. See that black stuff? That is um, from the honeydew of the, the poop of the um, scales. So that is like a feast for the ants. More scales. This is a different type that's kind of like longer on the orange here. They're like little, almost like little um, sticks, sort of, teeny tiny ones, um, and scales on a lemon. This is a funny scale. This is, um, it's called the cot cottony cushion scale, and they're much bigger than the other scales are. You can, you can tell by the size of the ladybugs in that picture how big these scales are. They're like I don't know, maybe like a centimeter uh, big. But if you cut one of these big fluffy things open, inside is a whole bunch, like thousands of the tiny scales. Um, so this is kind of like an egg sac, sort of. I'm not 100% sure on the biological, technical, scientific part of it, but just know that these are yet another type of scale. And again, you treat them the same way. And uh, the picture of the ladybugs I wanted to point out because ladybugs love to eat all three of the ant transmitted sucking bugs like uh, aphids, scales, and um, mealybugs. Aphids. This is a really common um, pest on lots of different plants, but especially on young citrus or new growth on citrus. They love that succulent, tasty new growth. Like in the picture here, you can see that the, the stem is almost black with all of the aphids that are on there. So when you flip over a leaf and you see bugs that look like this, they're, they're pretty small, but they're, you can see them. Then that you know you have aphids. Um, a lot of times they will cause new growth to curl up like those leaves. Did you, do you remember another bug that we talked about earlier that causes the leaves to curl up? Actually, lots of bugs do. So, and also diseases and viruses can as well. Um, so that's not, it shouldn't be your only indicator. You should be looking for other signs as well if you have aphids. Aphids uh, make lots of honeydew, poop, that will discolor the leaves and the fruit if the fruit is underneath it where it drops. 
Uh, it's sticky and kind of like oily. You can wash it off if you spray it with a hose, um, but it's just kind of a pain and it blocks the leaves from photosynthesis. So that's, that's the major reason that we don't like it. Um, sometimes they'll leave just the clear uh, sticky stuff on the top of the leaves because it hasn't um, kind of molded yet or turned into the sooty mold, but it's still aphids. Mealybugs and the last guy in this category. A similar size as the aphids and, um, and scales. They're, they're pretty small, but these guys may be a little bit bigger. They're real fluffy. They have um, usually two kind of like pointer antenna things on the top of them and then they're like they have like little jagged feet I think they are <laughs> but they um they're real they're real fluffy and they kind of make this like sticky fluffy white stuff all around on the bottom underneath of your leaves and if you notice in that first picture there's ants also that's what it looks like when the ants are farming these bugs they're they're actively you know moving up and down the tree moving these bugs around eating their poop more mealybugs, kind of like thrips. They like to hide in the areas where the, the two fruits are touching. And another picture of that fluffy stuff that they make. I guess it's probably their egg sacs and little guys come out of there. So this is something that's a little bit tricky. You might see the bug on the left and think, uh oh, I have mealybugs, but actually, that is a good bug. That's a baby ladybug. That's a ladybug before it turns into the, the red or the black, um, you know, ladybug that we're used to seeing. Um, it, it actually loves to eat mealybugs. So it's called a mealybug destroyer. I'm not sure, again, of the, the biological thing, but I, I'm sure, I, I bet that it looking this, this way and, and being so similar looking to the mealybug probably protects it or gives it some kind of biological advantage because oftentimes you'll see mealybugs and mealybug destroyers on the same tree because the destroyers want to eat them. Um, it's bigger though than the mealybugs and it doesn't usually have those two um, long antennas that the mealybugs do. Uh, t tails, I guess, antennas, tails. Not sure if that's the front or the back of the bug, but they have those pokey things. Um, and yeah, it's quite a bit smaller. So now we're moving into the minor bugs category, and we're only going to talk a little bit about a few of them. One is the Asian citrus psyllid. So we saw a picture of these earlier. And like I said, this is the bug that carries the HLB or Huang Long Bin virus, the citrus screening disease that is devastating the citrus groves across the world. We don't have it in Hawaii yet, which we're very, very lucky, but I'm sure it will come here eventually. This is why it's important that we have the, um, the agricultural um, inspections at all the different airports. Uh, if you notice, you may have them on your trees. You won't have the virus, but you may have these bugs. They, have, they do this funny thing where they stand at a 45 degree angle off of the leaf, like you can see in the picture there, and that's the easiest way to identify them. These guys do fly, so unlike aphids and mealybugs and scales who can only walk around most of their lives, these guys can actually can fly from tree to tree, so they're pretty difficult to manage. Uh, they're small, a little bit bigger than aphids, um, and the main thing that I've noticed them to do is, is cause these curly new leaves, again, like thrips and like mealybugs, but I haven't noticed too much... Um, that they do that's really a big problem for trees otherwise. So I don't consider them a major bug. You might have them, you probably do have them, but no big deal. Leaf miner and peel miner are ones that people ask about all the time because it's really obvious when you see them on your tree. They like to make little tunnels in your leaf, like right on the underneath the surface of your leaf or on the fruit. And sometimes you can actually find the bug at the end of their trail. Um, you'll see like a little sort of a sack uh, and you can squish the, the bug in there. Like in the last picture on this page, you can see that bug. Um, 
and it, it kind of messes up the leaves. It doesn't look very pretty. Uh, on the fruit, it, it definitely doesn't look pretty, and that can cause your fruit to be less marketable. But usually it's, it's in Hawaii anyway, we see the leaf miner more than the peel miner. Um, generally, I don't do anything to treat for this pest because mature trees can handle a few leaves that are going to have leaf miners. If I see them and I, I see like a whole branch is infested, I might just take the branch off and remove it from the area. Um, I like to squish them. Oh, it's so satisfying. Um, if you have a little tree that you just planted and you notice that all the leaves have leaf miners, then you may want to do something about it because that's going to be affecting the photosynthesis of the, the leaf and um, it could cause the tree to die. But generally, not a big problem. Ants. So ants are not a problem for your trees. They all right, so since we're talking about ants, let's talk also about sooty mold. Sooty mold or sooty mildew is what happens when you have honeydew on your plant. Sooty mold will grow in the honeydew. A lot of people kind of use sooty mold and honeydew interchangeably, the words, um, and it doesn't really matter. It's just the black stuff that comes uh, um, when you have aphids or mites. I'm sorry, if you have aphids or um, mealybugs or scales. So it's technically a fungus, not a pest, but it comes because of a pest or because of a bug. Um, you can spray it off or scrape it off with your finger. The problem is that it, if it's on the leaves, on a whole bunch of your leaves on your tree, and I've seen old big trees out you know, on the side of the road that are just covered in this stuff and they're leaves are almost black and you, you know that that tree is not really making as much food as it needs. So you really don't want to make your, let your problem get that bad. So if you see a tree that's really infested with this stuff, you need to deal with the pests that are causing it. Anthracnose is another fungus that we see here in Hawaii often. Um, if you see this sort of like teardrop staining on your fruit, it looks like maybe, um, you had something like running down the sides of your fruit and staining it, that is anthracnose. It also will cause leaf drop, the twigs will die back, and if you have um, a lot of it, if it's really, really bad, then it'll cause your fruit to rot qu more quickly, so you're not able to pick it and store it before you sell it. You'll get those sunken lesions, like in the picture on the bottom here. Usually you see this if you're overwatering or if you're in an area that gets a lot of rain, usually wet conditions cause this. So there's a lot of root diseases that can attack your citrus trees and it's really hard to identify them. They have so many of the same symptoms that uh, you can kind of just, you know, if you notice these things, maybe you should talk to your extension agent and try to troubleshoot with them. But if you start to notice the twigs dying back, leaves yellowing, defoliation, or if your tree dies, then that is a, um, it might be some kind of a root disease causing that on your tree, not a bug. Sometimes if you see um, this kind of damage on your fruit, you think, oh, I must have some bugs, I might have some pest. But it actually might be physical damage. Sunburn is really common because our sun here in Hawaii is really strong. I was out in my lemon field the other day and I have one tree that the fruit is, it must be just the angle it's at, but it gets so much sun that they all have these um, yellow sunken like areas on them and I'm not going to be able to sell those fruit. They are going to rot really quickly once they're picked and that's just from sun exposure. Um, wind damage will kind of, uh, if there's a, a, a thorn or even if it's just a branch that has sort of a sharp area and the fruit is rubbing against it, and you don't have any kind of a windbreak, and the wind really goes to town on your trees, you can cause um, sort of a damage on the fruit that looks a lot like mites or thrips, but it may just be the wind. Also, a lot of times nutrient deficiencies will look like disease or pest damage. So before you go spraying for pests, make sure that what you're spraying for is actually pest damage and not some kind of a physical damage or a fertilizer issue. So here are some resources for you that I use all the time. 
I really like the photo identifications because it helps me, you know, I, I, I look at what's different on my tree here that looks weird and then I have to go figure out what is causing that and what I can do about it. So you can look at um, the photo IDs of citrus pests and there's um, a, a website that has de details on the pests and the IPM for each pest. So it talks about what you should do and in what order um, to manage the pests. So it doesn't jump right to what you should spray on them, but that is something that it, it goes over if you've tried other things and nothing's working and you need to save your trees, then maybe that would be appropriate in that situation. But never your first resort. Um, I also put the links for the Master Gardeners and the UH Ag Extension. So if you're a home grower, Master Gardeners will be happy to help you troubleshoot or figure out what the pest is or what you should do about it. And the ag your Agricultural Extension agent, I hope you know who they are. Uh, if you don't, go to this website, contact them, and try to figure it out because they can be really helpful for to help you figure out what to do about different pests and how to manage them appropriately and safely. All right, that's the end of this workshop. If you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Feel free to email me at my um, email address there. And uh, stay tuned for our next workshop, which will be on post-harvest quality management and marketing challenges for citrus. Thanks a lot.